Yeah. What? What was that? I'm shooting a video. Oh. Well, hello. <laughs> well, hello, you two. <laughs> Changing a battery. <laughs> uh, in the middle of the night. It's not the middle of the night. It's like some, 9 o'clock. Because somebody wants the RV to be level. I mean, they don't like falling over the side. It's weird. You just don't want me rolling over on top of you. Very crooked. I don't know what he did. He broke it. He's saying he's fixing it to make it level, but he really just broke it. So now he has to fix it. <laughs> uh oh, I made fire. Is that straighter? A lot of people are asking me a lot of questions oh, about um, why we, why we are doing what we're doing, how we got the idea, uh, what did we do with our stuff. So I just really wanted to try and make a quick video answering all those questions. First one being why we why we decided to full time RV. <clears throat> um, full timing RV is definitely not ever what I had in mind. Um, a few months ago, me and Will actually almost broke up because I said that I didn't want to do full timing. Uh, I like to have a house. I like to have a yard. Um, I wanted my kids to actually go to school, <clears throat> and um, we we had a pretty big fight that night, and um, it was almost we almost broke up over it. It was um, I'm very traditional in that mindset where I want to have a house and be stabilized, and my kids to go to the same school and have the same friends until they graduate because I think that those kinds of long-term, life, lifelong relationships are really important, and I don't really have a lot of those, um, as I went to a million different schools when I was growing up. Um, so that's always been a big thing to me, but him on the other hand, he's, al he's always gone to the same school, so we had the same friends, and a lot of them he didn't really talk to anymore, so he didn't see it as a big important thing. Um, at any rate, um, worst came to worst. Um, I'm not here to talk about my super personal life outside of my Will's relationship. Um, that's not what I'm using this platform for, but um, I wasn't getting any help outside um, with the kids um, from their other family. And um, Will and I were trying to make it on and support kids on an income that was built for one person. As he's been doing custom motorcycle seats for about nine years, um, he decided to open a shop and had shop rent and shop bills as well as home rent and home bills. And so we were we were struggling and the money was leaving faster than it was coming in. Um, before Will and I got together, I was already back uh, behind on rent and it was just getting worse and worse and worse. Started couponing again. Um, was able to catch up on a lot of my rent, but it was just never enough, and luckily, my landlord, a lot of you know her, was super understanding in what was happening and understood how things had gone down. Um, I was very open with her about that, and she never evicted us, but was just like, okay, we'll just pay what you can, you know, and I didn't want to get too in debt. I was already in debt um, with a lot of other things going on, um, so I started looking to gate guarding. Uh, gate guarding, you take your RV, you set it up, you man a gate on an oil field, you sign people in and out, super easy stuff. Um, so I started looking into that and it seemed like it was super easy. Um, Will and I would both be able to work on other projects. I've been looking into um, a home-based business for myself. I've done a lot of research in that aspect. Uh, he does his seats, uh, motorcycle seats. Um, so it gave us a lot of downtime to pursue other careers in addition to be making um, $5,000, $7,500 a month uh, while not having to do very much of anything. Um, I did join some RV groups and found that minors are not allowed on site, which meant that I would have to leave Texan with his dad. And if anyone knows me, uh, that wasn't going to happen. I'm not leaving my son with a perfect stranger. So. Uh, I called my cousin, um, Will talked to my cousin's wife, and 
and an RV that they weren't using. Um, Will asked him if he got it fixed, could we use it? And they said, sure. So, um, fast forward about a month, Will found out about something called um, NDT, which is non, I forgot the word, non-dangerous uh, technology, something. Anyways, uh, radiology for the ground, x-raying pipes and whatnot for the oil field. Uh, he went and took a class on that, and a lot of the jobs are in Midland, are in South Texas, are in Tulsa, are everywhere else but here. Um, so we figured we could fix the RV and go down there and do it. Excuse this, I'm in the crow's nest. This is where Will sews and stuff and whatnot. Um, anyways, <clears throat> so he was um, really looking, really interested in that. The money is really great. Um, so yeah, that's why we are doing what we are doing. Um, I had some other questions. Let me see. What am I doing with the kids? Not that it's any, anyone's business, um, but the question has been asked. And um, I've it, I've talked to my parents, so um, the the thought that why am I doing this is is irrelevant. Um, my kids are more than happy to let us do what's going to be best for them in the future. Yes, right now I will have to leave them with my mom and dad. Um, and yes, I will be able to make a lot more money and come home and get them when, when the time is right. Um, right now we are only, I don't even know the length of it, it's a Class C motorhome, uh, so it's not that big. But um, in the near future, we're planning on getting a fifth wheel with slide outs, and it's going to be a lot of room. It's basically going to be like a house on wheels. Not a big deal. Um, so for those of you that have asked, what about your kids, blah, 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 um, that's what's happening right now. They're going to stay with my mom and dad for the time being until we can get everything situated wherever we are going. Where are we going is another question. We are going to Three Rivers, Texas. It is pretty much exactly between Corpus and San Antonio. Um, it's right in there. So there's a lot of work in San Antonio. There's a lot of work in Corpus. So uh, we'll be right there where he can go to either one of those locations and find work. Um, what are we doing right now? Right now he has not um, gotten a job. It is the end of the year. Um, Oilfield is not hiring. They're trying to meet their quotas and get their bonuses before the end of the year. Uh, so they're not hiring. <clears throat> What we did find is work camping. Um, if you haven't heard of work camping, work camping is where you take your RV, you go to an RV location, um, you work on site, and they pay for your hookups, and they pay you money and whatever. Well, the one that we called the position had already been filled, um, but they are doing maintenance on RVs. They are doing upholstery work on RVs. They are doing uh, redoing the interiors from all of those that were affected during the hurricane. Um, so when we called, and the work camping position had been filled. Will was like, oh, you know, I do upholstery and I was really hoping that I could help you guys out. And the guy's per ears perked up and he was like, come on down. So, uh, we are not work camping, um, but it is a position that we'll be able to just kind of live on uh, and save because our hookups and stuff is going to be paid for. Um, so we will we'll be able to save and then until the first of the year uh, where we'll be able to go do what he's been trained to do in the oil field. Um, next question was... How long do we plan to do this? Um, we plan to do this for... I'd say a while. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're looking into saving enough money to get a fifth wheel, like I said. Um, and then we'll be able to take the kids on the road with us, you know, set up shop somewhere. We're not going to be traveling all, all over, so, uh, yeah, that's not, it's going to be pretty stationary. Just live in the RV life. Um, and another question was, what did we keep and why? This was a really big deal for me, um, as when Will came into the relationship, he brought his dog and his clothes and his love for me <laughs> but he did not bring any items he did not bring any furniture he did not bring uh, he didn't bring anything 
So that four bedrooms was full of stuff from me, the kids, yeah, just me and, and, and the kids. That was it. Um, I had one room that was full of just my cake decorating stuff, my sewing stuff, um, coupon stuff. That was all my stuff. So I had to, it was very difficult to decide what we needed to keep, but I didn't have storage. Um, I sold all of the furniture. Um, I kept two mattresses. That's the only furniture that we kept. And a couple of dining sets um, that I ended up fixing up and, and selling. Um, but everything else, I had to be very strategic in what I was doing. And I was what you call a maximalist. I've always been interested in minimalism, but I also always struggled with the what ifs. What if I need this particular item and I don't have money for it in the future to have to go out and repurchase it? Um, that was always a big deal for me because we would be fine financially for a, a year or so and then like lose a job or get hurt or something in the past. Something always came up and there was not always money to buy laundry soap, uh, which is why I started couponing. And I would keep like a year's supply of laundry stuff at a time or two years worth of toilet paper at a time and I became a hoarder um, in that aspect of and in crafting you don't throw away fabric that's this big you could totally use that piece of fabric and I um, translated that into my personal life um, that I was just always yeah I haven't used it in six months but if I do use it in the future and I don't have it I'm gonna have to go rebuy it and I don't wanna have to go rebuy something that I already have now um, so having to change my mindset and be like what do I use on the daily what is important what do I what do I know I'm going to need um, and get rid of everything else was a very big deal and it was really hard and there was a lot of nights that I was crying because I just felt like I was just getting rid of uh, money. I've spent money on these things and now I'm throwing them away. Um, so yeah, it was really, really hard. Um, but I also incorporated the KonMari method. Uh, I read the book, um, The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up a while back and I incorporated that into um, my decision making just to make me happy. Um, it might be a necessary item, it might be something that I use once a month or something, you know, not something that I would use on the daily, but something that I would use once a month. Um, but if I don't like it, I'm, I don't I don't need it. Um, so I got rid of things that way and I figured in the future, if I do need this item, I'll buy a better version, a prettier version, a, a whatever um, that I will enjoy looking at every day of my life. Um, so that's just kind of I think those are all the questions that that people have had um, Will is working in the RV right now that's why I'm in the crow's nest and for those of you that don't know the crow's nest is a one bedroom house that is now housing everything he had at the shop yes he got rid of the shop um, we had to give that up <clears throat> and the pool tables and, and all that so now we've got boxes and boxes of fabric and three sewing machines in the kitchen, one sewing machine right here, uh, his computer desk, which is where I'm sitting at, and it is a mess. And we don't have propane in the um, in the RV yet, so every time we have to take a shower, gotta come over here to the bathroom. Every time we want to wash dishes, gotta come over here to the kitchen. It's a pain in the butt, I'll be completely honest. But anyways, um, I think I answered all the questions. I'm going to go back to the RV, I'm going to do a quick tour. Um, kind of, I guess, show you guys what we've got working with and what we have to fix, because there is a lot. Hey guys. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> That's Hi. not your introduction. I'm My name is Will. <laughs> I, I, uh... I have I, a baby in my butt. I have an RV. Stop. It's a 5.9 Cummins when the house is trying to switch. It's a 3.9 Cummins when the house But the, it doesn't... <laughs> doesn't muffle the sound of the three-year-old. <laughs> I'm going to go take the air filter off now and blow on it. Try to clean it a little bit. I'm 
too and short then, to video. And then we're gonna take and uh, flush the uh, brake fluid because it looked like chocolate milk. Not the kind you want to drink though. The kind you don't want to break with. <laughs> it's not like a, a Dunkin' Donuts chocolate <laughs> milk break. It's more like a crash into a tree and die and a flaming death of horror break. That's all. Goodbye, YouTube.